Welcome to What Can You See? I am your host, Barbie Black. And I'm David Black. And welcome to a special Halloween edition of our channel, no, of the show. And today we are doing a spotlight on Ingo Swan. Ingo. And I'm here to tell you all about him. So I'm going to read from this and I'm going to show you some stuff. And it'll be relevant. We'll, we'll, we'll tie it all together. It's going to be great. <laughs> Ingo, uh, Ingo Swan, who sadly passed away in 2013. He was an artist, uh, an author, and a pioneer in parapsychology. Uh, he developed the method called remote viewing while working at the Stanford Research Institute, uh, or SRI, back in the early 70s for the U.S. government. His efforts at understanding his own gifts... He was very intuitive. Uh, his struggles with legitimacy in the scientific community and at the world, uh, and with the world at large, uh, and the desire to lift the veil of illusion about the reality of profound superpowers, uh, we are all psychic, uh, are all beautifully illustrated in his many publications and works of art on his website, ingoswan.com, uh, which is currently maintained by his, his estate, so you can check it out. It's got a lot of really great information. Um, fundamentally, you can't really fully understand the gift of remote viewing uh, without uh, researching the brilliance of Ingo Swan. Uh, so when you're ready to dive in to the great unknown, it's best to start there. Right, so we're going to be including all of the links below, including some of the highlights and areas on ingoswan.com, which is run by his estate. Uh, in some areas that you may want to look deeper into. And we're going to talk about that today because it is relevant to our app, The Sea Psychic Trainer. It is. It is. So fundamentally, what I'd like to ask you, Okay. how does it tie together? How does Ingo tie uh, what we're doing and what you're doing with everything that we're trying to promote? Well, primarily we're talking about Ingo Swan today because as far as I'm concerned, he is the focal point. Um, there were a lot of pioneering spirits during the time when the program was created. And I feel like uh, the bridge that was made between um, science and the paranormal was an important step in why we're all discussing this today. So um, remote viewing is the basic method that we're attempting to advocate using uh, for the app. And it was developed at this time period. Well, at least as we understand the method today, it, there's a lot of different variations and there are a lot of adequate methods that work for different people. Um, but essentially it started with Ingo Swan um, being included in the SRI research, developing his own method of how to replicate his psychic experiences. And so when you read his... So, so what you're saying is they went to him because he was psychic first. It wasn't that they... Uh, had something in place already they needed him you know i'm not entirely certain what they had in place before he came along gotcha. however um it was my understanding that they had developed a program and were looking in the area of new york city uh for people who had a talent for either um psychic phenomenon or I believe the original program that brought him into um, sort of the uh, everyone's attention was there was a couple of people who had developed like oral photography and, I, and I, I'm saying that as in like photographing your aura <laughs> not like your mouth not oral but oral <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that um, adequately and um, they had Ingo attempt to emanate 
energy from his hands and I believe from the top of his head and photographed it and got a response from it. Okay. So they were attempting to photograph someone who could emanate energy from their body and Ingo was able to sort of do it. He did it. On no, he, he did it. Yeah. And they were able to capture it and... Um, you know, he was already known for his, for his art and his mediumship. So this brought him to the forefront of the program. What makes him remarkable, though, wasn't that he had psychic phenomenon, although that was remarkable, but that he was in that perfect place in time where the people that needed to find um, a medium found someone who was able to communicate in a way that opened the doors for further scientific studies. So he so he had the right um gifts at the right time. Exactly. Exactly. I you know a lot of people have psychic phenomenon. A lot happened to them, but not all of them are exposed to the people who can further that into a research facility and and have the wherewithal to explain how to replicate his results and and that that is the basis of what remote viewing is oh, that's important is. yeah yes. sometimes you'll ask a creative well how did you think of that and they'll just say well i don't know i just this came to me you know but if the ability to then explain how and break it down a little kind of opens the and door for replication. To do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Which was very important. I mean, you know, the most important thing was that he had the abilities. He was willing to become a, a guinea pig, I believe is the, the term that he used, for the government mm -hmm. in order to attempt to legitimize um, this field of study. And he struggled with it. You know, if you read into his autobiography, there was a lot of legitimacy issues and people who would side with him, but then be afraid to back him up in a long-term um, manner over, you know, it, 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 it certainly isn't easy to try to convince people that even if you can come up with the scientific results without saying for sure where the information is coming from in a way that we can wrap our heads around really uh, presents some challenges. So he was able to develop a method regardless of all of that. And this is sort of what we're doing now. Um, what was wonderful about it, it was his, what I felt was his desire for other people to learn about their abilities and to communicate with each other and assist each other in accepting that this is a real phenomenon and this is something that a lot of people have and not just select few and that acceptance really um helps us um, um helps that flourish you know causes it to grow and and makes it more available for everyone i i believe that ingo is important to see because it, his overall vision was to wake everyone up and let us know that we were psychic or had abilities or superpowers, that these things were legitimate and real. He was willing to be a guinea pig for it. He was willing to spend his life studying it. There were a lot of instances that he had that had paranormal activities that far exceeded even remote viewing. So the fact that he was able to create a system that allowed other people to replicate his abilities is astounding. And even though he had his own particular method, uh, he coined CRV, which was controlled remote viewing. Um, we will double check that <laughs> and make sure that I'm correct. But he really wanted other people to know that they had these abilities too. And that's really the core um, just goal of C is to let everyone know or give everyone the possibility or the 
uh, accessibility to try it for themselves and see if they can do it. So, I know you're really excited about I'm sh- your excited. about sharing your story. So, tell me the story about Germany. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> so. Okay. So I was reading a story about Ingo that I really loved and it was close to my heart because it reminds me a lot of the difficulties of convincing yourself that this is legitimate. Okay, so, all right, so you don't know the story. But I don't. In April of 19... 19- I don't. He doesn't know the story. Yeah, but she, I'm gonna, she told I'm gonna me I'm going to tell not- you right yeah. now. Just yes. hear she me wanted out. me to be surprised on camera, so... <sighs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Okay. 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 Hear me out. So in April of 1988, Inga went to Germany to have a discussion in front of a committee, not a committee, a conference. They invited him. It was like a psychic conference. And so they had a lot of different paranormal type people at this conference and they invited Ingo and billed him as this like super psychic that worked for the government and uncovered all of these things. So he showed up at this conference surrounded by like people who were giving readings. Right. So like people like me, like myself. And he had really billed himself as someone who worked with the military, worked in these legitimate scientific fields and didn't want to, I don't want to say break character, okay, Uh, because he was doing these things, but he didn't want to get into the weeds of trying to get caught up in prophecy or anything like that, because if, you know, if you don't get it right, you can, you can mess up your legitimacy, this sort of thing. So he was really there to talk about his method. And during the conference, um, he explained, you know, to, through via a translator, okay. uh, his entire method and, you know, the different things that he had done at SRI and all of this. And at the end of it, one, you know, desperate German voice said, can't you give us any prophecy? Right. And he was like, he felt like so angry and like on the spot that he had to like come up with something like he was like, he, it's it's not my field. It's not what I want to do. You know, my colleagues back home would be devastated if I just gave some random little prophecy. But at the same time, he said he felt like this heat on him. And he felt a familiar feeling. Okay. Okay. And that in that moment, he felt that there was a knowingness in the crowd that he could... A knowingness. A knowingness. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In the crowd, not he personally, but the accumulation of the people in the crowd had a feeling. And he blurted out, and this is April of 1988 during the Cold War still. Okay. He blurted out, and the Berlin Wall is going to fall down in like 18 or 24 months. And then the whole stadium like the crowd just like first they was like oh you know like he had to tell the translator translate it the translator was very you know like oh and they translated it and then the crowd was just like oh and then a wave of applause and excitement and enjoyment and they were super happy with what he said and it was well received and he said he was devastated he did that. <laughs> like He was like, what am I doing? Why did I say this to this group? This just, he's like, not, he's like, I could have said that the Berlin Wall was going to come down and leave it indefinite. And then I wouldn't have had to prove myself. But no, I said in like 18 to 24 months, I put a time limit on it. What a disaster, <laughs> right? I, I, you know, I'm supposed to be being this legitimate yeah. guy, right? Yeah. And, and here I am making all these prophecies, right? And uh, he said he went home. Yeah. And some year later, the Berlin Wall came down within his parameters. And he said he was sitting at home, you know, drinking something or in, had a mug of something. And he just came out of his chair like, oh, my gosh, this actually happened. Right. So he said in that moment, he knew he had to go further into that. And figured that out. It's it. It was way go, more than go just remote further, memory. further into what he experienced. Not only what did he experience, but what does it mean 
to know what we perceive as the future. Frame that for me. Uh, you know, he went into some questions about, you know, is the future predetermined? Is it something that we are creating? Is it something that because the multitude of people that were already there had an understanding or a feeling about what was going to happen, that he read that rather than it being, you know, his implication was he was reading the room rather than he was reading an event. And that in and of itself implies human interference. And he goes into that to so, some length. So, so what you're saying is in terms of that knowingness, the implication of that is he might have tapped into a collective knowing. Or influence. Uh. Don't worry about the vase. What vase? And then Neo turns and it breaks. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, okay. Right, we went to the Matrix, right? <laughs> right. So this was um, this was a lot of a lot of his writings involve his personal experiences with what could be considered extraordinary experiences including out-of-body experiences um premonition uh spontaneous premonition mind you okay not controlled which is a a situation that you put yourself in which he is known for right the remote viewing but something that is more organic and natural and spontaneous and sort of sort of um like those those moments of heroism where people suddenly turn around and stop something from happening well you know he implied uh and not so like subtly that his soul revealed things to him so that he could tell the world for example like it was out of character for him to be delivering prophecies on demand (laughs) right sure um, especially to a foreign audience, right, where you're trying to gain legitimacy. So, you know, a lot of his actions are very measured with occasional bouts of these insights that change his behavior and give him a different point of view and, and really refocus his efforts. And I think that the more you get into his autobiography, uh, you realize this is a complex subject. This isn't just as simple as learning a method. It's, it's a deeper conversation are we making things happen or are things predetermined we don't know so to that to that end remote viewing is sort of uh, a good first step to uh finding and well not necessarily finding but um it's a good way to put in your mind that there's a whole door of other things that you could walk through. Yeah, he he mentions more than once um, a collection of experiences that cannot be defined as remote viewing. You know, when he writes his autobiographies or or his impressions, they they do include remote sure, viewing, sure. but they're not yeah. limited to that. Yeah, yeah. and in fact. Um, what got him discovered, quote unquote, was not remote viewing at all. It was some sort of energy projection. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, there's other uh, terms: uh, telekinesis, psychokinesis, pyrokinesis. There's there's astral projection. There's there's, I mean, a lot of these have names, but we really are sort of on the. We're still at the discovery phase. We know that people have had these experiences. I know I've had experiences. You've got experiences. But we're sort of at the precipice, or or rather we're just slowly opening the doors, right? Well, I think we're in. I think we're in the door. I think think we're fully in the door. And we're at the point where, especially young people, are fully accepting that – psychic possibilities are real and they're practicing it i think that's very exciting i think 
um, there was a time in my own personal life where I would have never uh, spoken about my experiences blatantly. And now we've turned it into not only a business, but a product. And that's, that's a different, like, you know, like when I was growing up, um, we had a open understanding that the types of things that we did, you know, psychic readings or tarot Mm -hmm. or, or these sort of things were unique to our, maybe our culture or our family connections. And it wasn't it, it's considered entertainment rather than anything yeah. serious and i yeah, think i remember that through the 90s yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah. like you know everybody's into it yeah. but no one wants to really think philosophically about what it means that human beings can see the future yeah it's almost like we have our own experiences but for whatever reason the cultural filter makes it difficult to uh or at least did made it difficult to um, allow yourself to take it seriously. And now people are starting to take it seriously. You know, they're, they're having their own experiences. They're seeing, um, uh, and <laughs> remote viewing being at uh, probably the most studied psychic phenomenon at this point, or at least that I know of. There could be others, but at this point, remote viewing being, um, uh, I mean, at this point, what, 40 years of, of, of research into it and, and methodologies to teach people. You can learn it. Uh, anybody can learn it, right? So, so the idea that, that it doesn't exist is, is sort of going out the window and being replaced with this acceptance of psychic phenomena. Well, I think what's really interesting is that... It's gotten past whether or not it's real and into whether or not you can do it. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's empowering. It's empowering to know that everybody is psychic. And I'm. Or something. Or something. You know, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. 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 Psychic yeah. is just a term. It is. And, and I think, you know, it might. I, I don't want to say be a limiting term, but there's just so much evidence that suggests that more abilities are available to be studied more uh capabilities are coming to the fore that people are starting to realize some people are can see energy other people are you know are empathic and are able to feel others um i do a lot of um readings for people who have a predilection to dreaming dream prophecies uh, seem to be something that is coming to the fore, even with very young um, clients, uh, as young as like 12, actually, are, are coming in and saying, I have personal experience um, knowing something that was going to happen just before it happened, down to the very detail, even to the point that I'm freaked out about it. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? That's something, that's yeah. something to be said. And that mirrors what Ingo writes about. He is writing about his own personal experiences. And the only thing that really sets him apart is not the fact that he's having these experiences, but the fact that he was able to teach people how to replicate them. One of those experiences. And that's why we have the spotlight on Ingo Swan, because one of the easiest replicatable experiences for him uh, to teach the world was controlled remote viewing, which is sort of what we're doing with C. Now, C does give you the freedom to do whatever kind of remote viewing you want to do. There are a lot of different methods, not just Ingo's, but others. And, you know, I'm a big proponent of finding what works for you. Right? Yeah, definitely. You know, even, even though we are spotlighting on Ingo Swan, I'm not saying he is, is the only method. He simply opened the door and allowed us to, to develop on top of that. And, you know, we're deeply grateful for that yeah yeah absolutely yeah the the um i'm not sure where to go with that (laughs) 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 i mean that sounds all right you know you could clearly talk about your own psychic experiences you've had 
audio experiences, you've had things disappear and come back to you. I mean, maybe that's a little bit off topic, but there are certainly a multitude of experiences outside of remote viewing that legitimizes that this is a um, a good pursuit to, to, to I, dive into. Yeah, I have a lot of dream prophecy, actually, a lot. And, and um, I know a lot of people have it, and um, know what I'm talking about. You know, you'll dream something that seems uh, surreal, but very pointed. And when you wake up, it sort of tells you, "Pay attention to me. I'm important." Right? Hmm. And then, you know, maybe the same day, a couple days later, doesn't matter. Something occurs which is uncannily similar to that dream and and i have it all the time yeah and you you know it yeah you know it you know it's it's a there's a a a sense of personal experience a sense of um knowing that tells you uh it, it guides you that this experience is real that that it's not just well you know i had some you know funny little generic uh dream that can be fit into any mold and and any situation it's it's not that when things are key you know you dream about something specific a a person a place uh a specific scenario and then it plays out exactly like that i mean you get a sense of deja vu but then at the when the occurrence happens it's it slaps you in the face it's so hard and you know (laughs) and you're just like oh well, that was it. Okay, you know, it, it's, and then you have to learn from it. You know? Yeah, and I think discussions like this is really important to let, it, you know, for us to share that we're all having these experiences and that they're legitimate. Legitimacy yeah. is the biggest thing. You know, people need to be able to know that. Not- that's, you know, that's why we're sharing it. That's yeah. exactly why we're sharing it. You know, it the, 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 I think sometimes people are, they'll, they'll, They'll have an experience and then explain it away as, well, you know, maybe it wasn't really that important. But then when other people have had similar experiences, it kind of validates what they're having. And it's not some delusion when you can back it up with experience. Well, I, I think the most important thing to keep in mind when we're doing these types of experiments with each other, right? Because this is, this they are. is exactly what we are. Experience are experiments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is um, to allow for... Um, not getting it right you know the this is a practice this isn't a test and that's something that really i i think we need to kind of drive home is we're not you're not doing this to set yourself up to for failure or prove that you're not psychic you're doing this to improve a skill and that's something that takes repetition practice further instruction right and and that's what really we're trying to promote here is believe but work at it right you know get, getting getting yeah. into the act of accepting these experiences and then moving in those directions you know a lot of my clients come to me and um a primary uh, advice is pay attention to your own intuition your spirit knows what to do your soul knows how to lead you and if it brought you here thank you we're happy to have you yeah definitely yeah i this is important sharing the sharing the experiences are important you know i i, I believe that that you know when when it's just us you know we're at home and we're we're talking about the things that happen and you know the last um what 13 years We've been together, you know. We we spent that time. Hearts, love. Uh, <laughs> sharing experiences, sharing our own little prophecies, sharing our own um, uh, uh, <laughs> all the psychic things, all the 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 foresight or the strange synchronicities that we see. And they lately they've been just spiraling faster and faster, and you just see more and more of them. But you know, Aquarius. we 
I, I, what I'm getting at is it's not limited to just us. You know, when we talk to our friends and, and we hear from them and, and it, what's funny is we don't always bring it up. Sometimes they'll, it, they'll tell us about it, you know, and it's like, you know, there's more to the story than, uh, uh, than mere randomness in the universe, man. I mean, we're doing something and we're here to help everybody help you find your, uh, intuition find yourself right the more you know about yourself uh the more and find out more about Ingo Swan definitely because his is his interesting journey he was a brave man who did a lot of important things and this is uh, and he's the primary reason we're here today discussing the methods that we are. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ingo. Thank you, Ingo. God bless you. Or whomever. Whomever. All the blessings. All the blessings. May Jupiter bless you. <laughs> <laughs> All the blessings. Well, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. And happy Halloween. Are you going to do the thing now? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I'm I so guess, excited. I guess we're going to do the thing now. Ah, we're so, going to do the thing. So we're going to do the thing. <laughs> Jaguar face. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a kitty. <laughs> oh, <I'm> kitty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah. This is our yeah. outro. This is our outro. This is what we're doing. Uh, we're doing this for Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. Yes. Barbie and David. Yay. For four more seasons. Woo! 100 more seasons. 100 more seasons. David and Barbie. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. This is our outro. Oh, yeah. This is what we're doing. Oh, Szechuan sauce. Szechuan yeah. sauce. Yeah. <laughs>